Hey everybody, let's talk tools. Thought today we could just talk a little bit about the tools that I love to use, but let's establish a couple of ground rules first of all. One, this video is not sponsored. If there's any tool that I talk about that's been sent to me for review, or I've gotten for any other reason other than spending money out of my own pocket for it, I will make a note of that in the notes where I list everything that I'm talking about here today. And I will do my best to get prices either in the notes or on the screen because I don't know them all off the top of my head. Second of all, um, do not think that you need fancy tools to garden. You don't. You can go to your big box store, you can go to your hardware store, you can go to a yard sale and find tools that will do the job for you. So I don't ever want anyone to think that you can't garden because you can't afford fancy tools. That said, I have a lot of fancy tools because some people buy shoes or things and they choose to spend their money on those things. I choose to spend my money on gardening tools and I, I sort of collect them a little bit um, just because I'm always sort of looking for the next greatest tool because I have found that a good tool really does make gardening more enjoyable, but you can still do it without and God knows people have done it for a long time with nothing fancy. So let's start with that. Okay, let's just get onto it. I'm just gonna whip through um, the stuff that I use. This is the stuff that I just come back to time and time again, and it's what I reach for. So first of all, soil knife. Uh, this is A.M. Leonard's soil knife. It's, it's bright orange, which is super helpful. It's plastic, which I like, and it has um, kind of a, a protector for your hand. This is the soil knife I used to use, um, and I, say used to use because I just found this in my garden. It's probably been missing for three years because wood handle looks just like dirt. Lose it in the, stick it in the ground, walk away, never see it again for three years. And I put a little string on it, that did not help. So anyways, nonetheless, I don't like, this is not ergonomic at all. So I greatly prefer this one. Basically, this is what I hand weed with. This is what I dig with. Um, I don't really, if I'm weeding, this is what I'm using. Next up. The only trowel I use is this one. This is a Sneebor planter planting trowel. You can see it's flat and pretty wide. I like to stick it in the dirt and kind of dig to make a hole. You can also pry it like this. I find it a little easier on your wrist to go like this. They make one of these with a longer handle. I think I'd like to get that one. I think that'd be kind of nice. Um, and this is uh, Sneebor tools, which I have several of are expensive. They're investment tools and they're tools that you sh will never, should never need to replace. Um, so you buy them once, buy them right and buy them once. Um, I like this a lot. I've given this to at least two people as um, a Christmas gift. Okay, um, talk about cutting. So um, when you're talking about like a loppers, if I'm gonna use a loppers, I use this one. This is a Troyville loppers. Um, I only use the ones that are bypass. Anvil, loppers, and pruners are really only good for dead wood, and I just don't, you can use these for dead wood too, so I don't need to have anvils kicking around, generally speaking. Um, this is telescoping. The problem with telescoping loppers is that your arms, I mean, if you're trying to reach something, how far out can your arms go to get any leverage? So, generally speaking, I mostly use this one in its normal form but it does have good handles on it. It's pretty heavy. The only thing that's not great about that is that it's heavy, you, it's hard to, the head of this is big, it's hard to get it where you need to go. So usually if I need a loppers, what I'm actually using is this Garrett Wade um, saw, folding saw, pruning saw. It works great, I find it so much easier and it goes quick. I mean, it takes a little bit to get it started, but it goes quick, it's, um, to me, the preferred way of cutting bigger branches. Um, okay, hand pruners. Probably a gardener's most used tool, at least it is for me. And as you can see, I have a lot of them. So let's go through. This is a Baco pruner. This is what I used for a lot of years and I loved it. This is a smaller, this is a size small. And the reason I like that is because it fit in my hand really well. Um, there were things about that I didn't love. And this is supposed to be an ergonomic design. Ironically, I find this design of blade to be less comfortable than other 
supposedly non-ergonomic ones. Still, this is, a, this is a good pruner. I still use it. It's still kicking around. I use it on the regular. Sometimes it's just a matter of which one I grab first. Okay, this is an ARS pruner. And up until mm, just a few weeks ago, this was my favorite. And I reviewed this one in another video. You can see that it's been kicking around. The puppy chewed on it at one point. Um, I like everything about this one. It's great. I have no complaints and it fits my hand nice. This is the eight inch one. Try to find one that it's best if you can try them out yourself because um, the way they fit your hand is almost the most important thing. Okay, this is my latest acquisition in terms of pruners. This is a Milwaukee Pro Secateurs pruner. Um, okay, Milwaukee is a um, Japanese company, but you buy these from England and um, this one makes a great cutting noise. Now, it's much wider in my hand. I actually tend to hold it like up here. It cuts so great. It's such a dream to cut with. Um, it's pretty expensive. And I do like this latch on the bottom of it. Um, so right now I'm into this one, but you know, it's a toss up. Lastly, is this little guy. This is another uh, Niwaki tool. This is just a tiny little hand pruner. Um, and it's cheap. I think it was like $12 or $13. So if I'm just going out deadheading, this is what I use. If I'm just going around to clean up the garden or just cut a bouquet, because it's super light, it fits in my pocket, although sometimes I stab myself with that thing. Um, and it just gets in tiny little, especially for deadheading, it's very fine tuned. Um, I actually have another one of these in case I ever lose this one because that's how much I like it. And also, um, when you're ordering from Milwaukee, you have to pay for shipping from the UK. So you might as well buy everything you think you're going to need at the same time. So right now, this one's my favorite. It's also the most expensive of all these here. Um, and then the rest I use at various, at various times. By the way, there is the best, the best pruner is the sharpest one. So you could have a $15 hand pruner, and if it's sharp, it's better than this $70 job when it's dull. So a sharp tool is more important than almost anything else, I think. Speaking of Niwaki, I also got this. Now this is something special. This was expensive too. Can you hear? I'm gonna try to move this towards the microphone without like, cutting my face or my hair. Can you hear that great noise? Oh, it's so satisfying. So this is a, um, a pruner. They have several varieties of pruners, um, including like a topiary shears, which is really, really expensive. Um, and I looked a lot through their site to try to figure out which one I should buy. And it became clear to me that I am not a skilled enough pruner to need that topiary shears. That's for people who are like really artisans and know exactly what they're doing. Um, this is a step down from that, and this can handle um, thicker branches. Um, this thing cuts like butter. I can't even tell you what a dream this thing is to work with. So this is what I've been pruning my boxwoods with, and that's it. Anything else that I need to take a big whack with, um, I have a bunch of other ones like this. I didn't, bring, I didn't bring any of them out because one is as good as the next, as far as I'm concerned. If you're just hacking back plants, you know, just chopping at things, just get something with a sharp blade. Don't I don't feel like that's something where you need a super expensive tool. Um, this is an expensive tool, so I only use it for shaping hedges. And right now, the only thing I have to like prune like that is a boxwood. So anyways, this was a bit of a, um, probably I bought this at about one in the morning, I would guess. That's typically how I shop. Um, and a bit of an indulgence, but oh, it's nice. Okay, gloves. I only have... These are the only gloves that I wear. It's not that I don't like anything better. It's just the only thing I've ever tried. They work great for me. I don't know why I, did, I would try anything else. Um, these are just the Atlas gloves. These are those nitro gloves. The whole world knows these, right? I buy them on Amazon in like a six pack. I wash them. I put them in the dryer. I have probably 15 pairs in circulation at any given time. I just have a big pile of them. I grab them when I need them. They rarely match. Um, these work great for basically just protecting your hands. These are Duluth Trading Company um, rose gloves. Uh, they're leather. So I use these anytime I'm pruning something pokey or if I'm pulling weeds, like if I'm pulling thistles or something that have something really pokey, um, I use these. And they have a little bit of arm protection, so that's that. Okay, let's move on to bigger stuff that I can't be sitting at a table for.
Okay, so this is the tool that got me started on loving tools. This is a Sneebor Ladies Spade. And when I first bought this tool, I didn't know which one to buy. It comes in three sizes, regular, border, and this one. And I talked to the people where I bought it from, which is a company called Garden Tool Company. And we talked a little bit and I thought, and my concern was that this is not gonna move enough dirt for me because I was used to using a shovel. Every time I dug a hole for a plant, for anything, I used a shovel. And what I came to realize was that you are expending a lot of effort in a non-ergonomic way for your body. And that's not good over time, especially, I mean, I hate to say it, but I look around at some of the stuff that I built in this garden 10 years ago, and I wonder if I'd have the stamina to do that today. Um, because boy, it creeps up on you every once in a while. So anyways, this is, um, this is a tool that I've had for, I don't know, it's gotta be eight years, but this will outlive me. And, you know, I hope some gardener gets this when I'm dead and enjoys it because it will last that long. It will last as long as I need it to. So um, stainless steel head, you can see that it's got uh, just kind of a rough, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it. It moves all the dirt I need and it's got these good little steps on top so you don't hurt your foot. And I love this T handle. This is the ticket right here, simple. Sometimes simpler is better. You don't need all the fancy round stuff and all that. I love this thing. Um, so this is sort of my, I mean, if I was gonna grab a garden tool on my way out of my house as it was burning, not that I would, it would be this one. As long as I'm talking about Sneeborn on the Sneeborn fan club, and listen, there are other great garden tool companies out there. It's just that I happen to have these. Um, DeWitt is a great company. Um, there's all kinds of great companies who make great garden tools. Like I said, this is just what I'm using right now. I've used other stuff too. The only hoe I use on the regular is this one. This is the Sneeboard Dutch, Royal Dutch hoe. It's got, all this is sharp. So pull, push, all this stuff, it really cuts stuff off. I don't really use a hoe. Oh, and it's got this great handle so you can kind of hang on like this and pull back and forth. Um, I only use a hoe in like probably spring when I'm trying to just grub out a whole bunch of small weeds all at once. I have no idea what brand this rake is. It's rusty. I've had this rake for probably from about the moment we moved into this house. But get yourself one of these rakes that goes like this because this is great when you're going in between plants in your beds uh, to clean out leaves or whatever, or debris. And see, it's a little, ugh. And this is great for everything else, for the big pickup. So I just highly recommend a rake that is adjustable like this. I don't care, pick whatever brand you want. I don't think it matters. And last but not least is this funny little guy. This is a um, Baco uh, pruner that you stand and you can cut your edges with this. So if you guys have read the blog for a long time, you might have picked up that I love clean edges on my beds. Now, I don't always have them, but I love them. And it's, I truly believe that a clean edge on your bed makes your garden look better than anything else you can do. You can have weeds in your beds, and if you have a nice clean edge, it will look better than if you had spent that same amount of time weeding. So the way I do my edges on my beds is I cut them using a gas-powered um, Troy Built edger, and then I do that once or max twice a year, but mostly once. And then I go back and whenever I feel like it, I go back and I use this to cut the grass that's kind of trying to grow in there and just make a nice and clean that edge up again. And those two things combined are all I need to do for a season. Um, this is kind of a funky tool. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone else have this. They must, um, but it, it works great. And I'll um, put drop in a little video of how I use it, but um, I would not be without this either. This is a, this is a good tool like this. Okay, you guys, so those are my favorite tools. Um, these are just the ones that I reach for every day. I've got a whole garage full of other tools that I use on occasion, but I thought you might be interested in seeing some of the stuff that I use on the regular. And um, I would love for you to let me know if you have a great tool that you really recommend because I love checking out new tools. Like I said, this is, I don't know, I get weird about this stuff. I have probably way more tools and I spend more money on tools than anyone really needs to, but I do love experimenting and finding something. And um, it's just one more thing that makes for me gardening even more fun. And I find it to just be a little easier if you've got a tool that you love. So let me know what you love. Uh, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.